Okay, this is my second part of the video that was uh, that I did a couple days ago that's entitled What Will Happen After the Antichrist Brings Peace. And if you missed the first part of this video uh, series, I will leave a link that you can go to. You probably should go back and look at that first. But to kind of give you a review, we talked about uh, the rapture of the church taking place first. Then followed by that, uh, uh, Satan would bring about his Antichrist who would bring a seven-year um, peace plan, which will be, uh, which, which will have many parts to it, and will encompass, encompass many uh, facets of what the uh, peace accord will be about. We also address some of the scenarios and uh, uh, some of the directions that this could take in and of itself. So if you missed that, you need to go back and take a look at it. But we're going to, well, we got to the point where we were talking about uh, what would take place uh, when this war does take place, which would be, the uh, great apocalypse which takes place uh, in Revelation chapter 6 and I kinda wanted to pick up where I left off and that is uh, we're gonna talk about this war that will claim the, li the lives of one uh, one quarter of the world's population now, now the Bible says that once the uh, Antichrist brings peace uh, to the Middle East and probably to much of the world you know there's two directions that I believe that this could take number one there could be sustained peace for uh, possibly up to half the tribulation period, which would be three and a half years, or there could be war within a, a few months, because the Bible does say in, in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 3, I believe it is, that peace is, when the second seal is broken, that peace is taken from the earth. Now, we don't really know when and at what point that, that peace will be taken, but uh, I'm going to look at it from this standpoint. I've already addressed the fact that it, it could be taken from the earth almost immediately, and that would be when uh, Russia comes down with their Isla with, with uh, its Islamic uh, alliance and attacks Israel. That was one portion. Now, if you missed that, you need to go back at the other video that I did, the first part, and take a look at that because I do explain that. But there is a second uh, theory that I also believe could take place, and that is that we could absolutely have peace for three and a half years in relative peace should I say in which the world will enjoy a time of uh, real real peace and within this peace I believe that the Palestinians will get their state and that there, it will be a progressive peace agreement meaning that it, both Israel and the Palestinians will agree to progressively give uh, back land and when I mean give back land Israel will give back land and at the and of course whatever the Palestinians their, their part of the agreement will be they'll also be uh, going in steps toward this peace conclusion which will be seven years now I've, of course I have many people say well it's supposed to be a peace agreement they're usually you know doesn't that uh, mean that there was a war that took place before this no not necessarily I mean when was the last time that you had a time limit placed upon peace that's not normal peace when it's re when it's reached usually is perpetual meaning that uh, there is no time limit it's just a peace accord and usually that peace accord takes full effect until somebody breaks it there's never a time limit that's involved in it so I have to surmise that uh, there is something that is to be accomplished by the end of the seven years and uh, I also believe that there will also be uh, some agreements that will be made with some of the other countries possibly Syria right now they're in the middle of a civil war and also with Iran of course Israel can never have real peace until Iran's nuclear program is subdued and I think that that very well may be a part of this great peace plan that comes about in which within the seven year period time period that they step down from their nuclear program and reduce it uh, at various times during the seven year period until basically it is under the uh, complete control of the free world or of the uh, uh, atomic energy agency in which inspections are regularly taken uh, are, are regularly taking place well let's get into some of the key factors that I believe could play a part uh, and, and will play a part of the during this time between uh, the signing of the peace accord and the breaking of the peace accord which will be three and a half years into the tribulation period as many of you know uh, Satan will be in full control under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, you know, he, uh, whether he knows it or not he will be under God's control but he will think since the Holy Spirit has been taken uh, from the from the 
from the earth since Christians are going to be taken, the Holy Spirit will be taken. That doesn't mean it's going to be fully, that the Holy Spirit will not uh, still be in control, but uh, the Holy Spirit lives through the, the lives of Christians. But let's get to this peace accord. I believe that the Antichrist will bring peace, and through this peace, uh, things will look as though they're back to normal. And that very well may stretch up until the middle of the tribulation period. Well, this is something that I believe could possibly take place as a scenario that you might want to take into consideration. And that is around the middle of the tribulation period, the Bible says that there will be war in heaven. And that is found in Revelation 12, 7. It starts and says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought uh, and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the, the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his uh, Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony and they loved their not their lives unto death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that uh, his time is short and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the child the man child and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent now what the Bible is saying right here is that about the midway point of the tribulation period uh, Satan is going to re uh, bring about a great rebellion in heaven and there will be uh, war and Michael will fight against uh, Satan he will defeat him and Satan and his demons will be uh, cast from heaven and will be confined to the earth there's something you need to know right uh, uh, regarding this passage that that when the when Satan uh, enters the Antichrist those demons are also going to be on the earth as well and I have to believe that his demon army will possess everybody possible and uh, they will make up Satan's governmental structure so it is my belief that much of Satan's government will be demon possessed and will have supernatural abilities and these supernatural abilities will likely aid in hunting down and the capture of many Christians who refuse to take the mark of the beast when the time comes but getting back to the timeline, once Satan is cast to the earth, he will look to become the king of this world, and through that he will possess his Antichrist. Uh, now I believe that uh, Revelation chapter 13 describes that the Antichrist will at some point in time die, and when he is resurrected through Satan, that uh, it will be much like an imitation of Christ actually dying, and rising again from the dead now it may very well be three days later who knows but I believe the scripture says and teaches that Satan will enter into the Antichrist and uh, he will rise again and however he ends up dying some believe that he will be assassinated and uh, at some point in time three days later that Satan will possess his body now of course this is just a theory uh, in uh, interpreting that scripture, but I, I think that's pretty well accurate. But for the sake of the timeline, we'll just say that when Satan, that we'll just call it when Satan enters the uh, the body of the Antichrist, that he will now become a supernatural being. Now, previously to this time, uh, I believe the Antichrist uh, will not be in control of the world, but there will be an entity that will be, I believe, in control of the world. Uh, uh, in fact, the Bible talks about that entity, I believe, in Revelation 17. It says and states, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and uh, talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon the scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was name uh, was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall, in, uh, shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and is, and yet is. And her, uh, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are on seven mountains, on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he must and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is the seven uh, and goeth into perdition and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received yet no kingdom but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, and nations and tongues and the ten kings which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for god hath put it into their hearts to fulfill his will to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of god shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth now that's chapter 17 of Revelation and it's full. Now what I believe this is saying is this right here is that the the beast with the ten horns is the Antichrist and his ten uh, kingdom uh, nations. Now they're going to give their power unto the Antichrist. Now I believe that when Satan is cast out of heaven he's going to possess the Antichrist and when he possesses the Antichrist he will take his power and the first order of business will be to get rid of this mystery Babylon the great this mother of harlots which controls the world and the commerce uh, that uh, is the law of the land so whoever this kingdom is I believe it's the United States but some people disagree with me in that fact in fact there are a lot of other theories out there but we're just gonna stick with the uh, fact that it could be the United States because I believe right now that they are the uh, kingdom and if you look at Revelation 18 it pretty much describes mystery Babylon and what uh, are some of the facts that uh, will surround this kingdom when it is finally destroyed. But I won't elaborate too much on it. All I'll say is this right here is whoever this kingdom is, uh, the Bible describes them as the greatest nation and the commerce of the world. They've made the world rich. God calls this nation a harlot. And God only calls nations harlot. Uh, one nation that uh, God called a harlot was uh, Israel itself. And he called Israel a harlot because he they, they had a relationship with God. And I believe that that the United States, one of the reasons why it's the United States is because the United States started out having a relationship with God and has turned into a harlot. Now you don't find God calling Russia or China or any of the other nations of this world harlots because they have no relationship with God, nor have they ever had a relationship with God. Nor are there any other nations that I can even th uh, think of that have made the whole world rich, which the Bible describes uh, Mr. Babylon as doing in the last days. Now, if it's another country uh, that will become that you believe this is a, is going to be Mystery Babylon, then they better get up in a hurry and make this world rich by their 
buying of their goods because I don't see the nation with that characteristic uh, in the uh, uh, in this time frame. And if we are indeed living in the last days, some nation better rise up pretty quick and, be, and take over what the United States has, meaning becoming the world's uh, currency and also uh, buying all of their goods. But getting back to the timeline, I believe that once Satan enters the Antichrist, the first, first order of business will be to get rid of any rivals that might stand in his way to becoming the god of this world or the one world ruler. So the first thing he will do is order his ten kingdom uh, nations uh, to go and destroy the United States. Now I can't tell you how that's going to happen, but I do know this, that Satan is, is stronger than any, by far, than any nation that could ever be created in this world. So, however he uh, is able to do it, God is going to allow it to be done. In fact, he's going to put it into the heart of the ten kingdoms to do it. And what God allows, he provides a way for them to destroy it. In fact, it says in verse 17, 17, it says, For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So believe it or not, the Antichrist's kingdom will be on a mission from God to destroy whomever uh, this nation is. And the Bible says in chapter 18 that the world would literally weep and mourn over the loss of this nation because of the specific purpose of the fact that this country made them rich. This is going to be a devastating blow to the economy. In fact, all those U.S. dollars that is, is right now is considered the currency of the world will be worthless from this point on. And this will likely be the reason why we will need, the world will need a new currency or a new one world government. This will give the Antichrist uh, a reason to create a one world government and also to produce a one world financial empire. It will now be his world kingdom and it will now be his one world currency that we brought into play. And I have no doubt that the world will be in awe of him and will believe that he will be the one who will be able to turn this catastrophic event into something that will actually work. And going back to Revelation 13, 4, it says, And they shall worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war against him? After seeing the U.S., or whoever this, like I said, whoever this nation is, destroyed, the whole world's going to wonder, who in the world can withstand the power of this beast? And then now looking down at Revelation 13, 7, it says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Once the Antichrist destroys and crushes the United States, or who, like I said, whoever this powerful nation is, uh, who's going to be able to stand in his way? He will then bring about the persecution of the saints. He will then bring about the persecution of Israel and he will bring about his one world government. Now I'll go on, there'll be a part three to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end right here. But I do wanna say this right here, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not made that decision for Christ at this time, your time is running out. You need to make it, I encourage you to, to make that decision today, because if the Lord comes today, you're gonna to be left behind. This is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.